Hi, kids. Um, yesterday, or the day before, we talked about dividing decimals by whole numbers. Today, what we're going to work on, we are going to work on topic 5, 5, which is dividing decimals by by decimals. We're going to be dividing decimals by decimals. In other words, a problem that we will look at, we will have such a problem such as 2 and 5 hundredths divided by 1 and 5 tenths. So we'll be talking about a decimal being divided by a decimal. Now, in a situation like that, what you want to do is you want to make sure, first thing, you, you want to look at your problem and ask yourself, well, what do I have? Well, in this situation, you have a decimal divided by a decimal, which means you're going to have to deal with two decimal points. Okay? So that's our goal today is to show you how you do that. Now, let's start off with a basic problem. Let's take 8 and 4 tenths divided by 0 and 3 tenths. Now, when you look at this problem, you have your dividend and you have your divisor. So that tells you where to place your problems or your numbers in the problem. Make your division bracket 8 and 4 tenths, 8 and 4 tenths divided by 3 tenths. Okay. Now, when you do a problem like this, the very first thing that you do is you look and you say, okay, I have a decimal point in my divisor, so I have to turn that into a whole number. And you will do that by taking your divisor your decimal, and you will move it over as far to the right as you can. You will go over one spot, and then you take your decimal point and your dividend and move it over as many as you moved it over here. So that would come over, and that would create a new number that you're working with. Your decimal point is now placed correctly and you can now take it up and put it in your quotient. Once you've moved your decimal points appropriately, you can then begin doing your division like you normally would. So our problem is now going to be, if you could erase and get rid of all of those, it would now simply be this problem right here. It would be 84 divided by 3. Ask yourself, how many times will 3 go into 8? You can't do that. So 3 will go into 8 a total of 2 times. 2 times 3 is 6. You subtract and you end up with 2. Again, the same rules apply in your algorithm as they always do. 3 into 24 would be 8 times. 8 times 3 is 24. You subtract, and what you have is a terminating decimal, okay? Which is very nice, okay? Because sometimes they won't terminate, and you'll have to round, or they'll repeat, and you'll have to indicate that they repeat. So there you go, that's how you would do them. So anyways, let's try a problem on your own. Let's try a problem on your own. I'm going to give you the problem Let's go with 10 and 5 tenths divided by 1 and 5 tenths. So why don't you set that problem up and give it a try. And I will pause the video and be around to help you. All right. 
here we go. Um, if you haven't finished, you can just jump in when you have. If you have finished, follow along and correct as we go. So our problem is going to be 10 and 5 tenths divided by 1 and 5 tenths. So I'm just going to take this part of the problem and switch it around a little bit. My 1 and 5 tenths is right here. So now I have to bring my decimal point over out here one place to make that a whole number. So I have to bring it over here. So check and make sure you did that. Then it has to go straight up into the quotient like that. And then you're ready to divide. Now I'm going to erase all those arrows because that can sometimes get confusing. Okay. Now that I've moved my decimal point, I can then ask myself how many times does 15 go into 1? It doesn't do it. How many times does 15 go into 10? It doesn't do it. How many times does 15 go into 105? Well, in this case, you would have to take a guess. Okay, well, it's a little more than 10, so it's going to be somewhere less than 9. Okay, um, and a good guess would be 7. 7 will then be the whole number 1. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 gives you 10. Subtract, and you have 0. And that's how you solve that problem. So your answer is the whole number 7, and that is a terminating decimal. Let's erase and try another one. Let's try 14 and 36 hundredths divided by 4 tenths. So I'll pause the video and you can start that problem. Here we go with our problem. First step you do is you move your decimal point over one place value in the divisor, which means you'll move it over one place value in the quotient, or in the dividend. Your decimal point will then go straight up right there. So now you have the ones, the tens, and the hundreds, and you have the tenths. Okay? Remember, you may have to annex zeros. You may have to annex a zero or two. So now you treat it like normal division. 4 cannot go into 1. 4 into 14 will go a total of 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. Subtract, you have 2. Partial remainder below 4, good. Bring down your 3. 4 into 23 will go 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Subtract, and you have 3. Partial remainder is good. Bring down your 6. 4 into 36 will go 9 times. 9 times 4 is 36. Subtract, and you have 0. And this is a terminating decimal, and there is your answer. You can erase your board now. Okay, let's try one that's a little bit more uh, unique. Okay, let's take two and eighty seven hundredths divided by. 
one hundredth. Two and eighty seven hundredths divided by one hundredth. See if you can solve this problem. Well, in this situation, you're going to do the same process. You're going to move your decimal point over in your divisor first to make a whole number. You're going to move it over one, two place values in your divisor, which means you're going to have to move it two place values in your dividend. One, two. Bring your decimal point up and you're ready to divide. So now really all you're doing is dividing by one. Ask yourself how many times can one go into two? Go in there twice. Two times one is two. Subtract and you have zero. Bring down your eight. One into eight will go a total of eight times. Eight times one is eight. Subtract and you get zero. Bring down your seven. One into seven will go seven times. Seven times one is seven with the remainder of zero and it terminates. So your answer is the whole number 287. Let's erase our problem. Let's try another one. Let's try this problem. 72 and 8 tenths divided by 1 and 4 tenths. Give that problem a try. Okay, now we have this one ready to go. Start by moving your decimal point in your divisor to make a whole number which would give you 14. If you move it in your divisor, you're then going to move it in your dividend. Take it straight up, and now you're ready to divide as if it were a normal division problem with whole numbers. Ask yourself, how many times can 14 go into 7? It can't do it. How many times can 14 go into 72? Well, in this situation, it would be 5. 5 times 4 is 20, carry your 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 more will give you 7. Subtract, partial remainder of 2 is good compared to 14. Bring down your 8. 14 into 28 will go twice, 2 times 14, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2. Subtract, and you end up with 0. And that's how you do these problems. So anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to stop the video. I'm going to give you a chance to work on some of these problems on your own. There we go.